Hey everybody, my name is Sky, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this farmhouse DIY TV bed. So without further ado, let's get it. I was really inspired to build this bed after watching Build a DIY King Bed by Shanti Dashik. Although this bed does not look exactly like theirs, I did use their plans as a starting point. I first got started by cutting my hardwood down the size, including the 68 and a half inch by 42 inch, three quarters of an inch plywood. After cutting all my hardwood down to size, it was now time to start putting the headboard together. I started by putting pocket holes on the back side of the plywood, at the top, bottom, and sides. These pocket holes will be used to attach the top, bottom, and side frames. Notice how I also put pocket holes on the top, bottom, and side frames. Eight of these pocket holes will be used to attach directly to the frame. The rest will be used to attach to the side legs later on. The goal here is to make the plywood look recessed when looking at the headboard from the front. So in order to do so, I laid down some scrap wood to raise the plywood 3 quarters of an inch before screwing it in to the frames. After a little bit of wood glue, it was now time to take advantage of the pocket holes that we made in the plywood earlier by screwing in one of the side frames. After screwing in the first side frame, now on to the next. All we had to do was repeat the same process. Add a little more glue and then screw in the side frame. Before screwing on the top and bottom frame, we figured it would be a good time to stop just to check for any glue squeeze out. So we flipped over the headboard and sure enough, there was plenty of glue for us to clean up. Using the pocket holes on the plywood just like we did for the side frames will attach the top and bottom frame. But we'll also use the eight pocket holes that I mentioned earlier located on the side frames. Before using the pocket holes to screw down the top frame, I would clamp the seam of where the side frame and top frame met. By doing this, it kept the frames aligned as I was screwing in the pocket hole screws. After finishing with the framing of the headboard, it was now time to move on to the legs and then the design within the headboard. But before we can install the legs, we first have to construct them. The legs are two two by sixes that have been ripped down to two by fours and then glued and clamped together. Using the pocket holes on the side frames, we'll now attach the legs. As we attach the legs, we'll make sure they remain flush with the back side of the headboard. Now time for the fun part, the design within the headboard. We wanted to tie our bed in with our barnyard closet doors, so we opted to keep the same design. Something you have to keep in mind while doing the design for your headboard is the height of your mattress. We knew our mattress was gonna ride pretty high and we didn't want the mattress to cover up the majority of the design. So we decided to start our design 13 and a quarter inches from the top of the bottom frame. After we figured out where to start the design, the rest was downhill from there. All we had to do next was center up the vertical piece and attach the diagonal pieces. At this point, I was finished with the headboard for now. The only thing I had left to do was to stain it and paint it, but we'll talk about that more later. So for now, on to the side rails. The side rails were pretty straightforward. After cutting and ripping all my wood down to size, it was now time to start assembling the side rails. 
We first started by putting pocket hole screws at the top and bottom of our 3 quarters of an inch plywood that we previously cut down to 9.5 by 80.5 inches. We then took two 2x6 boards that we ripped down to 2x4.5 inches. We'll use the pocket holes located on the plywood to attach these two boards. But before we do, we'll make sure we put pocket holes on the sides furthest away from the plywood. These pocket holes will be used to connect our 2x2.5 inch trim pieces. Just like with the headboard, the goal here is to make sure the plywood looks recessed when looking at it from the front. So before using the pocket holes to screw everything together, I raised the center plywood piece 3 quarters of an inch. I would use clamps here just to prevent the boards from shifting as I was screwing them together. It was now time to install the top and bottom trim pieces. But in order to do so, I again had to raise the side rails 3 quarters of an inch. Using the pocket holes located in the 2x4 and a half, I attached the top and bottom trim pieces. After a little bit of sanding, we were done for now with the side rails. So now it was time to move on to the footboard. So when making the footboard, I knew I needed to have some type of design box that tied in with the headboard. The inside of this box or footboard will be used to contain the TV lift and TV. The majority of the footboard was built using 3 quarters of an inch plywood. After taking into account the thickness of the TV lift in TV, I decided to make my first cutout, the base of the footboard, at 78 and a half by 6 inches. Using pocket screws and wood glue, I then installed the front wall. This is the wall that the TV lift will be screwed to. When installing this wall, it's very important to make sure it's centered on the base. Otherwise, the footboard would look completely off-centered when it's all said and done. Before screwing everything together with pocket hole screws, I would use a clamp to prevent the front wall from bowing out. Now I know I originally said I started by cutting the base down to 6 inches, but the truth is, I started by cutting the base down to 9 inches. But I thought 9 inches was too thick, so I went back and I cut it down to 6 inches. Now it was time to add the right and left side wall. We'll use pocket hole screws on the inside of this wall to attach it to the front wall and to the base of the footboard. Then we'll install the left and right side panel. Each panel consists of three different layers. For the inner layer, instead of using a full sheet of plywood, we'll use scrap pieces instead. Notice how we also put pocket holes on the outer side of the side panels. These pocket holes will be used later on to attach the side legs. Here I would clamp down a speed square to stop the side walls from moving outward as I was screwing them in. And now it was time for the side panels. I guess you could say I used wood glue and clamps for everything when it came to this project. I don't know what I would do without them. I would use clamps here to stop the side panels from shifting as I was screwing in the pocket hole screws from the front side of the panel. And remember, each panel will have three different layers. Each layer will be three quarters of an inch thick, and for the center layer, we'll use scrap wood instead of a full sheet of plywood. My wife tells me I don't wear my glasses enough, so I doubled it up 
to Mega for the last times. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> Attaching the scrap pieces was pretty straightforward. All I did was use a little bit of wood glue and pin nails. And then I turned around and did the same thing for the front panel. Oh, I almost forgot. We also decided to cut off this front piece of the base. Aesthetically, it just didn't look appealing, so it had to go. At this point, we were pretty much done with the foundation of the footboard. All we had to do now was add a back strip across the top, the left and right side legs, and then a back cover. This back cover will give us access to the TV whenever we need it. Now we're starting to finally see the TV lift box, or footboard, take its shape. Again, using wood glue and clamps wherever I could was always the best thing to do. And in places where I couldn't use a clamp, I would use my wife to help me out. After finishing with the strip across the back of the footboard, we then went on to install the side legs. These side legs were constructed the same exact way we constructed the side legs for the headboard. Now we needed something that we can screw a piano hinge into. This piano hinge will be used to allow the mantle to open and close. So we decided to install a 1 and 1 8 by 3 quarters of an inch lip around the opening of the footboard. We used thin strips of plywood to come up with a design that tied in with the headboard. The plywood we used was about 5 millimeters thick. We also wanted everything to feel as smooth as possible, so we made sure to patch and sand everything. Now it was time for the staining and painting of the bed. We knew we wanted the overall look of the bed to look somewhat like this. So in order for us to achieve this distressed look, we first got started by staining the parts that we knew we would go back later on and sand down. We decided to use the chalk paint when it came to painting the bed. We figured since chalk paint is easier to sand, it would make the de-stressing process of the bed a whole lot easier. To de-stress the bed, we would use an orbital sander with a really fine grit. Then we would use a clear coat to seal and protect the bed. At this point, we could pretty much see the bed coming together. All we had to do now was put the bed together, install the TV, and complete the mantle. Since the TV lift we decided to use also came with a rocker switch, we decided to mount this on the outside of the footboard. This rocker switch will lift and lower the TV lift. After installing the TV lift and doing a little bit of cable management, it was now time to install the TV. Since we needed a thin TV, but also a TV with beautiful quality, I decided to go with Samsung's QLED line. I like this TV so much, I think I'll be using it again in the future for other TV lift projects. I can see the blessings, I can feel your presence. I 3D printed some L brackets to keep the back cover from pushing in. In order to plug in the TV lift in TV, I made a hole for the electrical on the back cover. I used 2x4s in the corner to connect the side rails to the footboard and headboard. To support the mattress, I made custom frame slats by ripping 2x4s in half. 
These slats were supported by 2x4s that were screwed into both the left and right side rails, along with a supporting structure that I built in the center of the bed. Using a 2x4 that I cut down to 5 inches, I made sure that each frame slat was equally spaced. Yeah, buddy, we gon' keep 